Okay, so this is a very quick video um, in response to Magic Preppers Will You Survive Mob Rule and SHTF. And in this video, just going to my notes, um, he asks, Are there any other strategies that will be beneficial? I'm guessing beneficial for oneself or beneficial for one's family or cause as opposed to beneficial to the new ruling authority. Um, so in the video, he's basically talking about collapse scenarios. Um, I'm guessing a dramatic collapse, like uh, government is totally overwhelmed for a prolonged period of time. Now I've decided to take an interesting uh, response to this is that I was reading um, before watching this video and during, um, left of Bang, How the Marine Corps Com Combat Hunter Program Can Save Your Life by Patrick Van Horn, Jason A. Riley, Sean Coyne, Stephen Pressfield. And the book sort of is a lot of fill, but there's a few morsels of useful information. I'm only around a third of the way through the book, but because I don't have too much time before going out for the lunar eclipse, I'll just uh, sort of paraphrase how this is applicable in uh, this type of situation. So, who is the mob? Um, you know, I always, if you're in a situation, you should have all those Green Beret sort of assessments or early um, Office for Strategic Studies type assessments for your area of operations and know what is what and who is who and uh, where stuff is and how to get it you know um, and what people want and how to uh, get what people need and business and commerce and everybody still has needs right in a collapse it becomes much harder to get what people need but people are willing to pay more for it hence inflation that's not the point though so politics is politics and it's all about who the new authority is and uh you know you see this with elections you know in a two-party system like the u.s or depending on states maybe more but uh even in primaries it's people with different values and you know generally they all sort of conform to the same cultural ethos so you do have other cultures within places like the united states multicultural societies um, not total melting pots where there's still vestiges of different religions and values. But if you look at it as a person, a student of history, we actually have a lot in common today as compared to the past. So we all have common roots also, so we're all very similar in the past. Um, humans aren't that different. As much as people fight over the little things and little values, um, you know, in the past they would just kill people to not have to debate issues and rule by forces whoever's strongest gets their way um, so I guess that's sort of the identity of mob rule but in reality um, you know the earth is over overpopulated so the willingness of humans to mass genocide um, away large segments of the population generally doesn't show itself in organized society or civilization but that's not the point so this goes back to the, what are they willing to do so what are they going to do? What what are their laws? What are their rules? And you know, what are you willing to do? So how do you work in that system? And then uh, how do you prepare based upon the you know their at likely actions and the context of what you're operating in, like your operating environment, based upon the conditions they bring into that operating environment? You know, what are you able to do and are you going to be prepared or able to work in that system so if you can deal with that system then that's fine right you can you can it's life whereas if you're a dead man or a refugee to be then you need to start looking at other options so dead or fled um you know that's where <laughs> you're basically left with a bug out um 
but there is one other option but i'll get to that in a bit um so it's it's a dire situation you got to assume that people in your community or from neighboring areas um are they going to be hostile or not hostile to you and that's where you're talking about uh, you know maybe you can organize and cooperate with them that's life you know people don't turn into um you know people hacking other people's limbs off just by default it takes a lot of hate and animosity to be pre-existing in specific groups for people to be willing to do barbaric acts to other people like the depravity of uh black friday um on mass and all of society it can only last for so long before um <laughs> people need one another because stuff to fight over runs out um but because the battles will generally be fought and then you know you need a certain amount of force to fend off more force and that's how society forms right that's a bit of society itself is that you know it's mutualism or cooperation to fend off against outside forces that's politics that's political boundaries that's sort of how nations exist it's always going to form up to some level or the more organized society will kick the lace organized societies but and that takes time to realize but it will eventually start happening with intergroup combat and then you're going to want force and numbers or technology or, or whatever that's war so you may just go back to that that said some people may be smart enough to realize that's how the situation plays out and that goes back to the midbrain or, or limbic system and that people's short-term desires or wants only take you so far because you know man has outsmarted beasts so except for dogs they have owners taking care of them nonetheless to say that that we're basically domesticated people and we have a certain structure of society and class and otherwise where people are managed so you know you're always going to have managers of people unless everybody's an enlightened philosopher king okay um so in a prolonged collapse um what are the grounds for a bug out well basically your situation's worse being where you are rather than going somewhere else and you know either you have somewhere to go or you have a bug out location or you better be able to make one quickly and develop a plan because without one it's a bit like walking around in a dark room hope that you've never been in before and you're hoping to find a bed you'll be bumping into a lot of things you don't want to bump into of course there are strategies in, in getting around that room safely but it won't necessarily be evident and obvious to people um who don't think about it ahead of time but basically what it goes back to is more like green beret and surgeon operations so how do we deal with situations uh the old go-to is freeze flight fight it's the animalistic side the limbic and you know this could translate in a prepper verse as shelter in place bug out or fight and you know in this situation of shelter in place that's your freeze that's the inaction that's the we'll just wait it out and it's safer just not to do anything because you don't want to provoke a response but if you know something's going to attack you and tear you to shreds then you take off and if you can't take off uh, or you are also a predator um, then you can try to fight off the attack um, so when a person's back against is against the wall either physically or psychologically and a lot of this will be psychological until it's that point of no return that uh, the brain will willingly and quickly prepare to fight if it has a chance for survival as far as it can recognize based upon the information you've fed into it and it exists subconsciously based upon your past experiences so in this book the big thing that it's going through a whole lot is be left of bang does it make sense to you if not i'll explain okay so left a bang isn't only for combat warriors right a bang this is what van horn and riley explain in the book itself is that 
it means you're acting after the bomb has gone off. After the shots have been fired. After the damage has been done. The book says you don't want to be right of bang. You want to be left of bang. Left of bang means you got to be in action before the bad stuff happens. Before the ambush. Before the bang. You want to be alert, ready, prepared to respond, to protect yourself and your loved ones. You're not waiting for a collapse. You're acting before the collapse even happens. It's all one stream of consciousness, man. So, if in a world without uniforms, the enemy is unidentifiable. It could be staring you right in the face and you wouldn't even know it. So you need to look for universal patterns of human behavior. And identify the threats. Realize that an attack is imminent. It's going to happen. Prepare. And you got to recognize that people are going to prepare for attacks. They're just not going to like walk up to you, pull out a gun, and shoot you. I hope. Um, but you, usually, if a well coordinated attack that has planning, I'm not sure who actually does that. You know, let's write a book about what we're going to do and send it to people. Like, who does that? Um, anyway, so there's cues and things. So, what things are in place when somebody is going to snipe and blow your head off? Do you live your life in a way that you'll recognize those threats? If not, why not start now? <laughs> but no, seriously, like for car bombs and IEDs, there may be, you know, a sloppy bomb planter may, you know, leave a shoe or something next to it, you know, because like it's obviously not there. Um, or they may strap it to a dog and send the dog after you or something. But in a mob rule situation, you need to know who you're up against because you need to know what they're capable of and then think what you would be capable of if you were them and you were smarter. So you need to profile the situation. You need to understand if where would you do the attacks? What time would they occur at? Where would the locations be? And then you need to think, based upon what they know about me, how will that occur? So if they're trying to gain power and influence, if they just want to kill you, why not just burn your property down? You know, why why, why isn't it already done? So there's an amount of time and that people can act with them. So if they're not doing it yet, then there's obviously something else they're more concerned about or occupying their time, or they just really don't care about you. But uh, usually you can think out a situation, but understanding who they are and understanding how you are identified to them back to the gray man thing you had mentioned is that you know being gray in that situation if the norm is going to be acceptable rather than people randomly pulled off the streets and that's you do you know like um you need to act based upon the information you know and then obviously there's critical things that you need to protect against and you know it's sort of common sense bug out or um begin the planning perform reconnaissance and maybe if you're discovered or seen then you'll be a threat um so complete the plan and uh get the orders out for how you're going to do it with your group or yourself and watch what happens but um this goes back to observe the situation orient yourself and uh decide based upon what you know and implement it act the Boyd decision cycle. That's a retired Colonel John Boyd. So these are the four main steps that a person, group, organization takes from observing a phenomenon to responding. Observe, orient, decide, and act. Oh, duh. So 
observe your surroundings, make sense of what you see, decide what to do, and then execute what you've decided to do. But uh, this goes back into heuristics also. So it's a way of making decisions with little time and information on the fly. And it's the tools to observe more acutely, judge more accurately, decide more quickly in dynamic environments. So a conscious or subconscious strategy that searches for minimal information and consists of building blocks that exploit evolved abilities, environment structures. So you should already have a plan. You shouldn't be waiting to see what happens. You should already have plans that you can implement. Um, and you got to recognize that there aren't perfect solutions um, other than saving your butt and coming out of things in a situation you can continue life from in a way you like. Um, but you may not know all the dynamics, so you're going to be dynamically responding to situations. And you can plan so much, right? So there's only so much you can plan, and there's only so much you can know. So obviously kind of use your best judgment to get out of the situation. But best judgments can also be gut feelings and intuition. So more than a hundred scientific studies as of this book in 2007 or whenever it was, um, have demonstrated Billy can make accurate intuitive judgments with basically not knowing too much about the situation. And based upon where you're coming from, that will uh, aid to that also. But you can determine who is the violent offender or person who wants to do you harm, usually based upon how they interact with you or how they appear to you. What's your gut feeling? Don't always judge a book by its cover, though. A lot of people get creeped out with me, and I'm not a violent person at all. Unless I have to be. Um... So make your decisions, have the plans and implement them. And yeah, so the, the thing is to hesitate is to be lost. So that could be a meal, that could be your family, that could be your life or your leg. In a hostile environment, you need to be prepared to respond to the environment and recognize the threats in that environment. You must be the hunter, not the hunted. Okay, I got a... A uh, lunar eclipse once in 500 years type stuff to do. Revelation 612, end of world, planning stuff. So I gotta, I gotta go. Nonetheless, that was 20 minutes. I don't know if anybody will listen to all 18 minutes of it, but that's it.